Damien here with Fig Boot on Pens, uh, back again with another Q&A. Uh, I have a lot to go over today. It's been a while since I've done one of these. Uh, so what I have for you today is some questions submitted from viewers. Then I have a very special announcement you're not going to want to miss in regard to another puzzle contest, which starts today. And I'll wrap things up with some mail time. Uh, what have I been up to lately? Um, our area has been hit by two hurricanes this season. We have been uh, very fortunate that the damage has not been bad at all. Just a few downed trees and power outages. Uh, basically inconveniences as opposed to the life-altering destruction that other areas not too far away have received. So we've been very fortunate. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was a guest on the Nib Section podcast, which was a lot of fun. Uh, you could find that on the uh, Nib Section uh, website as well as wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, I get a lot of correspondence from the Australia and New Zealand region. Uh, there's a lot of passionate fountain pens users or fountain pen users in the area. Uh, so let's get into some questions. Uh, the first question is from Mary, and she asks, "What is your favorite non-pen related hobby?" Uh, I do have a few hobbies. Uh, I feel it's important to diversify when it comes to hobbies. It can't be 100% fountain pens all the time. So uh, I do enjoy sports, playing and watching them, uh, and uh, also enjoy video games, mainly PC games, but I do own a, a couple of consoles and will break down and uh, play them on, on occasion when I'm forced to. Uh, let's see, I, I played a ton of Skyrim when that came out a couple of years ago. Uh, lately, I've been... Uh, uh, playing a lot of Diablo 3 on the PC, and I, I'm looking forward to the anticipated uh, Diablo announcements coming up at BlizzCon here in just a few days. Uh, even though that uh, Blizzard has tapered back some of the uh, the Diablo 4 talk, but uh, um, I'm looking also forward to playing uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, which uh, may or may not be released by the time I release this Q&A. Uh, Rockstar has historically knocked it out of the park with just about every one of their releases. Um, it, uh, I pre-ordered it, and it's just waiting for me to play it as soon as it goes live. Uh, I mentioned this previously, but in the early 2000s, I actually worked for the gaming peripheral company Razer. Uh, I was one of the original employees when the company was just starting off. So I've been involved in the business side of the gaming world as well. Uh, I, I enjoy magic. Uh, if you want to see me perform a trick, you can check out my Delta Dolce Vita Stantufo Federico review. Uh, I start off that review with a trick. And, and who knows, you might see another trick or two down the line. Uh, let's see. Oh, I used to play a lot of tennis as well. Uh, I played on my high school and college teams. Uh, I would play in tournaments and things like that. I still get out on occasion, uh, but not as much as I used to. And uh, I also enjoy playing golf. Uh, I need to get out and play more, but it's pretty hard to beat a, uh, a day out on a beautiful golf course. Uh, I find it to be relaxing and I love playing. Uh, and then, you know, actually each of the golf shirts I wear during reviews, I don't have a golf shirt on today, uh, but um, each are from courses that I have played. Uh, well, almost all of them. I have a couple of shirts from Augusta National that I picked up when I was fortunate enough to attend the Masters a few years ago, uh, and the course was breathtaking. But I have not had the opportunity to play that course, uh, which is essentially the holy grail for any golfer. Uh, not only for the amazing course design, but also because of the tradition and the course history. Uh, it is a private club, so you can't just book a tee time. Uh, you either need to be a member or a guest of a member in order to play. Now, someone who's a member of the club must like fountain pens. So if you are a member of Augusta National, I will gladly accept your invitation to play your beautiful course, uh, even if it is under the condition that I never mention it on social media. Uh, my email is in the notes below. I'll be waiting for that invitation. <laughs> Uh, the next question is from Leith, and his question is, how many bottles of ink do you own? I, at last count, it was 155, which is enough ink to last several lifetimes. Uh, I have over here a six drawer storage unit that I used to have two drawers dedicated to ink. Now it has four drawers full of ink. And I have another little end table over here that has two of his drawers filled with ink. So yes, I have way too much ink. The next question is from Emilio, and he asks, uh, how often do you find yourself reselling your fountain pens for various reasons? And if you do resell, what are your, using, your, what are your reasons for doing so? You know, this is the struggle that I have. On one hand, I own way too many pens. Uh, there are many pens which I haven't inked up for several years that I could sell and write, really not even miss. Uh, and it would be nice for them to find loving homes. Uh, but then there's the comfort of having a large collection for reference purposes. I know that if I ever need to re reference a popular pen, then the chances are I have one in the collection I can pull out. 
Now, I have sold a few pens, and I will say that uh, that I haven't come to a situation where I've really needed one of them for something and uh, regretted selling them. Uh, I, I do have a website that currently really does not have any content, and uh, I thought about posting reviews there or having a blog and also using the store feature to sell some of my pens that I was no longer using. I just really haven't gotten around to it, though. But yes, I, I do sell pens on occasion, and uh, typically it's not because I don't care for them. Uh, it's just that I have others that I care for more, if that makes sense. Uh, Jose asks, uh, what are your favorite TV shows currently playing and of all time, maybe something obscure? Let's see, favorite TV shows. Well, in regard to all time, uh, I was a huge fan of Lost. Uh, I was obsessed with that show. Uh, Breaking Bad was incredible as well. Uh, in regard to, to current shows, I love Game of Thrones. I'm really looking forward to the final season coming in 2019. Uh, and as a precursor to Breaking Bad, uh, Better Call Saul is a fantastic show. Um, something else I love about that show is that they put out a podcast after each episode where folks involved in the production of the episode um, mainly talk about the behind the scenes production aspects of the show, kind of like how they created the episode episode and the production issues and challenges and successes. Uh, to me, stuff like that is fascinating. Uh, let's see. Oh, Deadwood on HBO was an incredible show as well. And I'm very much looking forward to the Deadwood movie that's supposed to be airing in the spring of 2019. So um, let's see. Something more obscure. Well, it, it'll be obscure for some, but uh, as my t-shirt shows, I, I love uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 in all of its incarnations. Uh, just uh, about a week or so ago, there was a live, per uh, live performance of the show here in my town. Uh, Jonah and Joel were there, as well as all of the robot friends. Uh, it was fun to see the show, the TV show come to life. Uh, back in the uh, the late 1980s, I was or early 90s. I was a member of the MSTK 3, uh, 3K fan club, and they would uh, actually send out this amazing printed newsletter twice a year to their fans. I, I wish I still had my physical copies, but you can actually find all the volumes of the newsletters online. Um, it was just cool to receive mail directly from one of your favorite shows. It was pre-internet days, so things like fan clubs and zines were more of a thing. And since there was no website to go visit, uh, it was a really good place to get all the news on your favorite show. Uh, the next question is from Matt, who says, uh, what's the most difficult or challenging thing about doing reviews and running your channel? Uh, Matt, I'd say that the most challenging thing about maintaining this channel is uh, producing at least one video a week. It's kind of a cycle that doesn't end. Once I complete one review, I need to kind of get working on the next week's review. Uh, I kind of need to do better in regard to stockpiling a few reviews. Uh, Matt Armstrong used to have seasons where he produced a, a specific number of reviews for a period of time each year and then took a number of uh, months off, which was an interesting format. But yeah, I'd say that the, the most challenging thing is the fact that there isn't an end point and there's it's always on to the next review and uh, I, I really don't ever take a break. Now I'm still having a lot of fan, fun with this channel though and I have a, a long backlog of reviews I need to get to. So that's why lately most weeks I've been putting out two reviews. Uh, I'm still trying to catch up a little bit on the things I feel I have to get to. Uh, the next question is from uh, a user by the name of Scheissgeist. Uh, and it says, if fig boot on pens had to be fig boot on anything but, but pens, uh, could you just see yourself reviewing something besides fountain pens, ink, and stationery? Uh, sure. Uh, I would probably review films. I'm a big film buff. I love talking movies, as evident by my ink reviews, where I usually use the opportunity to talk a little bit about some of my favorite movies, which usually have a, a loose tie to the ink being removed, uh, re reviewed. Uh, that's one reason I actually settled the name Fig Boot on pens, uh, so that if I wanted to branch out into another topic, then it could be Fig Boot on, fig boot on music or Fig Boot on, on movies or something like that. Uh, there was intent behind that. Uh, the next question is from uh, Jonathan, who says, I'd love to see an interview with a Nibmeister. Uh, Jonathan, I'm working on that. Um, it's kind of tough to sit down with some of the popular Nibmeisters at shows since their services are in such demand. Uh, I have uh, one popular Nibmeister who's agreed to sit down with me the next time we attend the same show, uh, but we keep missing one another. He's been at the shows I haven't attended lately, but not the ones I have. So uh, one day we'll sync up. But yes, I would like to sit down with the Nibmeister to discuss their craft. I think that would be interesting for me and then also for everybody else. Uh, and then for the last question, uh, it is from a user by the name of Hubastank63, 
And the question is, uh, what are your some of your favorite new ink companies and why? Uh, what new inks have been your favorite in the last six months? Uh, with well, we've had oh, there's been a lot of cool things going on in the ink world over the last year or so. Uh, we've had the introduction of Colorverse, which are amazing inks and marketed really cool with their themes. Uh, Robert Oster continues to crank out tons of new inks. I think they have actually put out two new inks in the time it took me to make this video. Uh, Three Oysters has starting to have a presence in the Western market as well. Uh, there's just a lot going on, which is nice to see. Uh, Papier Plume isn't necessarily a new company, uh, but they've come out with some cool new colors. Uh, and there are, you know, there's only so many, you know, new colors in the palette or so many colors in the palette. So companies are having to do other things to differentiate, or differentiate themselves from their competition. So it's really fun to see what the companies come up with. Um, I have a, a color that's being sent to me by Papier Plume that uh, that should arrive on Monday or Tuesday that I'm really looking forward to checking out and, uh, and sharing with you guys because it is something really cool. Okay, that's it for questions. So on to the contest announcement. Um, I recently posted my 200th video. Uh, this video here is actually number 202. And to celebrate this occasion, I wanted to have a giveaway and not just a regular giveaway. From time to time, I have been known to have puzzle contests. Uh, these are contests where clues are hidden somewhere in a series of videos, and if you correctly follow the clues, it will lead you to a solution. Uh, my goal with these types of contests is twofold. Uh, first, I like puzzles, so a contest like this is a little different and folks might find it to be a fun challenge. And second, it gives the viewers who actually take the time to solve the puzzle a higher chance of winning the prize. Uh, since, in theory, there'll be a lower amount of entries into the contest as opposed to one where you just leave a comment in the video, which is kind of easy to do. Um, I thought I had ramped up the difficulty on the last puzzle contest I did, but there were over 300 people who came up with the correct answer. So this time, we'll see, but I believe that I've ramped up the difficulty on this puzzle. Uh, there will be no clues or hints. The only instruction is that the clues begin with the Krishna Jungle Volcano review and end with this Q&A video. Solving the puzzle will lead you to the name of your prize. Once you've determined what that prize is, please email your answer to me at figbootonpens at gmail.com. Uh, today is October 27th, 2018, uh, and you have until end of day on Friday, the 2nd of November to enter. So you get a week. Good luck. And I know that if you solve this puzzle, you will have earned it. Uh, I've had people uh, ask how I announce the winners of my giveaway. Uh, I'm not sure how I'll announce the winner of this specific contest. Uh, probably something involving uh, actually showing you what the solution is. But typically when there's a contest where you leave a comment, I uh, conduct a random drawing of everyone who entered and I reply directly to that comment on YouTube, giving the winner a deadline to get back in touch with me. Uh, and uh, it has happened uh, once in a while, but it hasn't happened recently. But uh, on two, a couple of occasions I've had winners not get back to me so I've had to select replacement winners. Um, after I've heard back from the winner and made contact I add their name and or their username to the notes of the video containing the contest. Okay on to some mail time. Uh, if you would care to write me a letter, you can find my mailing address in the notes below. I'd love to hear from you. Um, that, And I have committed that if you write me a letter, then I will write you back. And I, I believe I've been pretty good at that. Uh, I have a few letters I need to get to, but I've really enjoyed the process of writing everyone back. And uh, it kind of gives me another excuse to use my pens, uh, as well as my wax seals. I've kind of been getting into wax seals lately as well. I think they're rather cool. So if you send me a letter, the chances are good that I'll also also feature it here on this mail time segment. Uh, I might have time, not time to show uh, every single letter, but I really appreciate your correspondence. Um, first of all, let's see. Oh, we have a letter from Stephanie, who is in the San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, she actually works at a plant nursery that specializes in cacti. Um, she also sent along a sample of the Robert Oster Pacific Blue, which was the ink that was exclusively available at the San Francisco Pen Show. So thank you very much for that, Stephanie. I'll have to check that out. 
Um, next up is something from Adam. Now, uh, I can't recall where Adam is from, but he sent along this very nice pen pillow, which I appreciate. Um, I've had this thing for a while and I've been waiting to show it here on Mail Time. Uh, that I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, use this on my desk at work for the pens that don't necessarily fit in the pen well, which aren't that many, but I kind of needed something like this at work. Uh, but I, I couldn't take it to work until I showed it here, so I will be getting some use out of that. So thank you, Adam. Then, you know, I did receive a couple of postcards from Ryan, who is in uh, Fresno, California. Uh, there was a couple of postcards here from Ryan. There is this one here as well. One of them here was from Hearst Castle, which is a very cool place to visit if you're ever in Central California. Um, I also have a postcard here, and this one is from uh, Daniel in Amsterdam. Um, I've been to the Amsterdam airport, but someday I'd like to actually venture out into the city. It seems like a really cool place. Uh, Daniel didn't include his uh, return address, so he didn't receive a letter back, but I see Daniel and his adventures on Instagram all the time. Uh, I received a nice letter from Tony in Kansas City. Tony always has the coolest envelopes. This white ink on this black envelope really makes the letters pop on here. And who doesn't like to get something like this in the mail? This is just amazing. We have a letter here from Alice Dar in Australia who is looking to, um, he was looking to potentially pick up a Wall Eversharp Deco Band. Um, they're great pens, Alice Dar. Um, they're very large, but very nice. So if you pick one up, I hope you enjoy it. Um, that uh, I think you'll enjoy it. And then here, here is a letter from Dean in Virginia. And uh, what Dean wanted to know was he was curious how many people solved my last puzzle giveaway. And Dean, the answer was uh, too many. Uh, I mentioned that earlier, but uh, you guys are too smart. So I had to ramp things up for this contest. It's your own fault for being good at solving puzzles. Uh, then here with this very nice wax seal, I had a letter from Urban in Germany, who is part of a new fountain pen themed podcast called the Fountain Pen Companion. Uh, they have a few episodes under their belt. So uh, best of luck to you, Urban, and the rest of your team uh, that the podcast is sounding great. Uh, on their latest episode, they actually have an interview with the Brad Dowdy of the Pen Addict. So I have, hope you guys have fun creating content. Oh, okay, this was cool. This is from Alexander, who lives in Hell. Norway, that is. Uh, he, let me see in this letter here, that uh, Alexander works as a driving instructor in uh, in uh, Hell, Nor and Hell, Norway. Now, I have never been to Hell, Norway, but I have been to Little Hell, Virginia. That's where our dog's breeder uh, lived, out in the countryside. So Alexander was nice enough to include a couple of things. Um, one is that it was an ornament of this traditional Norwegian building. Uh, this actually might make its way up onto a Christmas tree this year. It's kind of cool. And then he also sent along uh, a magnet from hell, which I'll actually put up here on my wall behind me. If you send me a magnet or a piece of art, uh, I'll add it to the collection behind me and uh, you'll see it on future videos. Uh, let's see. Oh, I received a nice letter from Evgeny here. Uh, Evgeny was a member of the BYOB podcast gang who have kind of gone their separate ways, but most of which are starting up projects on their own. Uh, Evgeny is an audio engineer, so whatever he ends up producing, I'm sure it will sound fantastic. Uh, oh, okay. This next letter here is from Gopi. Now, I hope I'm pronouncing that's correct. It's G-O-P-I, who lives in the Chicago area, and she was looking for some suggestions as to um, how she could use her pens more often. Well, Gopi, writing letters is a great start. Um, there's lots of pen pal groups, whether it be folks who are into fountain pens or other interests. So uh, writing letters is a great way to use your pens. Uh, especially also in this world of email, that there's something cool about receiving a handwritten letter from someone. It's just so much more personal. Uh, let's see here. Someone sent me a, a nice postcard of Van Gogh's irises, which is one of my favorite paintings. I, I couldn't quite make out the name and there wasn't a return address, but whoever sent this, 
Thank you. Uh, they, uh, they said that they learned about PO nibs from one of my videos and feel that it is a fantastic torture device for their pen pals who are forced to read such small handwriting. Okay, a couple of more. Um, here's a letter from Catherine, who is a uh, doctor of internal medicine in Indianapolis, Indiana, uh, and that for a doctor, she doesn't have terrible handwriting. Besides fountain pens, she actually enjoys photography, and she sent me a picture here of her Pilot Vanishing Point Raven Stripe and a bottle of Mont Blanc uh, Beetle's Psychedelic Purple. This is a great picture. Um, she also sent along... If I can get it out here, where did I put it? Okay, here it is. Uh, this Pen BBS number 309 for me to check out. Um, I have not reviewed a Pen BBS yet, so uh, I might just need to do this in the near future. So, uh, Catherine, thank you for the pen, and uh, thank you for the letter. Uh, let's see here. Oh, there is um, uh, a very nice letter from Daniel, or I'm sorry, Darren, who lives in Wyoming who has some smaller handwriting, uh, and that he recently picked up a Pilot Stargazer, which is a great little pen. I would really highly recommend picking up one before they're all gone, since they've been discontinued. And that he's saving up for a Pilot 823, which is another fantastic pen. Okay, a couple left. Um, there is something here from John in Toronto. Nice letter, um, and that John had a goal this year to write 100 letters, which is basically two a week. So I think that's a reasonable goal. Um, he is also uh, into photography and included this really nice picture he took uh, at a lake just north of Toronto. Uh, it looks really nice. I hope that's not too much of a glare, but uh, it looks really nice. So thank you for the picture, John. Then two more to go here. Um, we had a letter here, or I have a letter here from... Uh, Bryant, who lives in South Carolina, uh, and included with this letter, uh, he included a little quote from Winston Churchill with a little portrait of Winston in there, which is nice. And then finally, uh, I received this postcard here from two people uh, named Orsi and Holly. Orsi lives in Budapest, Hungary, and Holly is from Boston, uh, here in the US. And they were online friends who had the chance to meet up in person in Budapest, and they were nice enough to send me a joint postcard. So thank you very much, ladies. Uh, it was probably also kind of cool that you guys were able to meet up together. Okay, there's more letters, but I think that's enough for now. I appreciate your correspondence, and if you care to send me a letter or magnet or priceless doodle, then my address to my P.O. box is below in the notes. I think that'll wrap it up for this Q&A. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will uh, try not to make it so long before I get to another one of these. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.